Here we are once again for Hope Today, a program of encouragement and faith. Thank you so much for spending this next hour with us. It is great to be with you. In this program, Pastor Tom Cullen will be helping us discover Jesus in an act of service. The scripture passage being referred to this time is the New Testament Gospel of John, chapter 13, and verses 1 to 17. You may want to have your Bible open to that selection. Just a quick reminder that you can find the daily study guide for this program and additional teaching at L-I-G-H-T, the letter N, the word life, dot C-A, lightandlife, dot C-A. But first, let's sit back and find inspiration with Mac Wigfield and some gospel music. Mac, please come and lead us. And there is gospel music coming up on this segment of Hope Today. Let's begin with an unvarnished declaration, shall we? The Hayes family, our God reigns.
And in their song, they connect us to the God whom the Apostle John says came by water and by blood. Here's Meadow Lane, my Savior, Lord, and King. God saw my sin and sent a Savior down to the earth to die for me. His sacrifice became my victory. The blood He shed gave life that day. He is the King of earth and glory. His power still just as strong today. He lives and reigns over death victorious. He is my Savior. blind man open and I've seen the bones of the lame the man oh but greater still my soul found victory a sinner saved my sins washed clean he is the earth and glory His power still just as strong today He lives and reigns over death victorious He is my Savior Lord and King He is the King earth and glory His power still just as strong today He lives and reigns over death victorious He is my Savior Lord and King He lives and And as vital and important as all that is, thank God it is not the end. There will come a day when King Jesus comes to live with us again. Here are the Oak Ridge Boys from way back in 1973.
I'm so glad you're with us on Hope Today as we continue to discover Jesus through the New Testament book of John. Today, we have the privilege of going with Jesus and his disciples behind closed doors and hearing their most intimate conversation as he prepares them for his death and resurrection. Stay with us as we see Jesus act out the truth that he did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Here is Meredith Andrews with Wonder of Wonders. The painted sky, the sparkling sea, they whisper who you are, the distant glow of galaxies, radiates your heart, there's a soul. In the New Testament book of John, we read of an amazing act of service in chapter 13. We read, 
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Isn't that amazing? We're given two pictures. The one picture of an exalted Jesus who had come from God and was going to God and the serving Jesus. The difference between those two pictures is astounding. I'll never forget when President Obama visited Canada for the first time and everyone was so taken with the fact that this man with all his power and authority would stop his motorcade and go to a local bake shop and buy some maple leaf cookies for his children. Wow! The difference between the two images that we have of Jesus here is like that, but so much more. Think of it for a moment. The text says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. This speaks of the Lord's supremacy. There's no one above him. And the text says that he had come from God. This tells us of his authority. He had been sent from God and there was no authority greater than his. And then the text says that Jesus knew he was going to God. This speaks of victory. He knows that Satan will not win. Jesus knows that he will sit at God's right hand and will be the firstborn from the dead. So Jesus has all supremacy, all authority, and certain victory. He's not some pale Galilean, but one in whose hands is all authority, upon whose shoulders is all supremacy, and through whose actions is certain victory. Truly, he is the king above all kings. And yet, he serves his disciples. Tom Rowe reminds us of the exalted Jesus in You Reign on High. You are the Holy One, the Lord on high. You reign in majesty, you reign on high. You are the risen one. I will worship you I will worship you I will give you all my praise To you my hands I raise You are the worthy one We give
scripture tells us in John chapter 13 that Jesus had all supremacy, possesses all authority, and has certain victory. And then we read in verse 4 the word so. It means as a result of, because of. And what do you expect to follow? Anyone I know in this world who has supremacy, authority, and victory calls for his butler to feed him, his chauffeur to drive him, and his employees to serve him. But not Jesus. And this is the wonder of it all. Jesus, says the text, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Do you get a sense of the difference between these two pictures? We have to understand that washing feet was a slave's job. All of the ancient texts show that foot washing was a degrading and lowly task. In some Jewish sources, we see the task of foot washing described as so menial that not even Jewish slaves were allowed to practice it. It was reserved for Gentile slaves. And never, never do we find those with a high status washing the feet of those beneath of a lower status. So, the one who is the image of the invisible God, the one through whom all things were created, so that not only are all things created by him, but they are created for him, the one who is before all things and in him all things hold together, does the work of a slave and serves his disciples. The wonder of it all. He is the servant king. Here's Graham Kendrick. From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our world, your glory there, not to be served, but to serve, and give your life that we This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. There Garden of tears, my heavy load he chose to bear. His heart with sorrow was sore, yet not my will, but yours, he said. This is our God, the servant. Calls us now to follow Him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the Servant King. Come see His hands and His feet, the scars that speak.
Many large cities have places where the downtrodden, out of work, and derelicts can come for a helping hand, a hot meal, or maybe overnight lodging. You may feel somewhat uncomfortable in these places and attempt to avoid them. Maybe we doubt our spiritual strength or our ability to help. Fanny Crosby was a tiny, blind lady who, as most know, wrote so many hymns, poems, and songs under so many pseudonyms that the number is only estimated. Yet for many years, Fanny made regular visits to the New York Bowery Mission to help and to speak to the people there. Here is her personal recollection of a visit in 1869, and I quote, I was addressing a large company of working men one hot summer evening when the thought kept forcing itself on my mind that some mother's boy must be rescued that night or not at all. I made a pressing plea that if there were a boy present who had wandered from his mother's home and teaching, he would come to me at the close of the service. A young man of 18 came forward and said, Did you mean me? I promised my mother to meet her in heaven, but as I am now living, that will be impossible. Fanny Crosby had the opportunity to steer the young man to the right path. That evening, the line, Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, came to her, and she did not retire for the night until the whole hymn was ready for the music, subsequently written by her longtime friend, William Doan. Listen now to these challenging words as Baptist College Chorale sings Rescue the Perishing.
John chapter 13, we witness Jesus do something amazing. He washes the feet of his disciples. His disciples. That just makes the whole act even more astounding. Some of his disciples came into that room arguing who would be first in the kingdom of God. Another came into that room, says our text at verse 2, intent on betraying him. Every one of them came into that room not understanding who Jesus was or what he was about, yet he stoops down and washes their feet. The wonder of it, that our Lord would serve anyone, but that he would serve such a group that is slow of faith, weak in their devotion, rebellious of heart, fickle in their loyalty, and so self-seeking. But our Lord washes the feet of each of them. Not one of them is left out. And then, as if that is not enough, thinking that my wonder and awe could go no deeper, I am made to think of how he has served me and you. For in a very real sense, Jesus stepped out of all the beauty of heaven, took off all his kingly robes, and made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a slave, being made in human likeness, he served me and you. He washed me and you. As he went to the cross and died for me and you. And even now, having been cleansed of our sin and put into the family of God, our feet still get dirty with the things of this world. And while we don't need a bath, for we have, through faith in his sacrifice, been forgiven and cleansed of sin, we still need to come to our Savior to be cleansed of all the filth we fall into, the sins we commit, the silly, sinful things we say, and Jesus once again wraps the towel around his waist and stoops down to cleanse us. He still serves this way. And that astounds me. Here are the Reflections Trio with Lead Me to Calvary. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crowned brow. Lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou wast slain, tenderly mourned and wed. Angels in robes of light arrayed, guarded thee whilst thou slept. I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Let me like Mary through the gloom come with a gift to thee. Show to me now the cup of grief to share, Thou hast borne all for me. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget The fact that Jesus served his disciples by washing their feet is astounding. That he would so serve, and so serve us by dying for us on the cross, moves us to wonder and worship. But there's not only the feeling of wonder. Isn't there also a motivation to serve? 
So we hear Jesus say at verse 14, Now that I, your Lord and Savior, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. And we say, yes, yes, that's it. That's the motivation to serve. That's what drives us. It's because we've been served by the King of Kings that we serve others. It's because we've been served by Jesus Christ, even when we did not deserve it, that we're able to serve those whom we think do not deserve it. And isn't that one of our greatest problems when it comes to service? It's easy to serve those who are able to pay us back. It's easy to serve the lovely and the popular. It's easy to serve when we'll be recognized and congratulated. But to serve the ungrateful, those we deem sinful, those we don't agree with, those who hurt us, the difficult and the hard, well, that's different. It's difficult to serve and sometimes downright impossible. Unless, unless we realize that we are sinful and ungrateful and disagreeable and difficult and hard, and yet the King of Kings has served us, then we're able to serve others. Jesus said, as I have done for you, so you also. That's motivation. So Rhonda Lehman sings, Make me a blessing. Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is rife, making the sun. Thanks for listening to Hope Today as we focus on the truth that Jesus came to serve, not to be served. And so he calls us to serve in turn. 
the Mission Worship Praise Band sing the Servant Song. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. on a journey we are brothers on the road we are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you. Speak the peace you long to hear. rise to God when we sing to God in heaven we shall find such harmony born of all we've known together of Christ's love and After Jesus washes the feet of his disciples, he says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. What would that look like practically? I found the writing of Richard Foster to be helpful as he lists a number of different types of service that are possible in our world today. There's the service of listening, or what scripture calls bearing each other's burdens. In our high-tech age, people long for someone to listen to them. It's a great act of service. There's also the service of small things. This is serving another by driving them to the hospital or the grocery store when they have no car. It's going to the widow's home and raking the leaves one Saturday afternoon. We often look for big acts of service and forget that it is the small things that have far-reaching consequences. There's the service of common courtesy. Words like thank you and yes please, letters of appreciation and encouragement are all services of courtesy. There are so many different ways to serve another. And we're able to because our Lord first served us by giving his life for us. Truly, he is more than amazing. 
Lincoln Brewster sings. You're the one who walked on water And you calmed the raging seas You command the highest mountains To fall upon their knees You're the one who welcomes sinners And you open blinded eyes You restored the broken hearted And you brought the dead to life Forgetting all our sins You remember all your promises You are amazing More than amazing If we had royalty among us, we would not expect them to bring us a cup of tea. We would do everything we could to serve them. Jesus, the King of Kings, came to earth to serve those in need and who were lost in sin. What an example for us to follow. Thank you for your message today, Pastor Tom. Please go to lightandlife.ca where you will find the study guide for our next program and additional teaching. It is L-I-G-H-T, the letter N, the word life, dot C-A. Before we are together next, you will find it helpful to read John chapter 17, verses 1 to 8. You may want to hear this program or a previous one again, or you may want to share a program with a friend. You can do all that by visiting www.lightandlife.ca. Through the website, you can also send Pastor Tom and our team a note. We would love to hear from you. Hope Today is produced at Straight Path Studio. We look forward to being with you and your friends next time for another program of hope. Until then, keep looking ahead. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again.